Hi everybody, welcome to the second week of chemistry. We are going to scroll down on Google Classroom to chemistry. There we are, chemistry experiments. Mine's gonna look different from yours because I am the instructor, you are the student. Um, there's our one from last week. We are going to open up our science magic. Or I don't want to watch the intro. Okay, today we are doing spinning match. Let's watch our quick video. Okay, there was our question there. Why do you think the match moves? It shows that you need safety goggles. If you don't have them, you do this experiment will not hurt you if you don't have safety goggles. Okay, we need a plastic cup, a match stick or a toothpick, two nickels and if we are not lighting the matchstick, so if you are using a matchstick, technically it is not lit, but I still want you to ask your parents' permission before doing this and let them know that we are not lighting the matchstick in this video. It is just going to be spinning under the cup um, without being lit. Okay, helpful hints. Challenge someone in the audience to figure out how to get the match to spin on the coin. If they suggest using the balloon, let them try. Just don't show them the cup. Then you can be the hero by adding the cup and making magic. So what it's saying is you can use this experiment and use it as a little magic trick. So if you want to shock your siblings or something, go for it. Unless they're in the same class and then they're already going to know what's going on. Okay, how it works. Here we go to read all about it. And that takes us to how it works. I do want you to read this section. However, I don't want you to read it before you do the experiment. I want you to read it after you do the experiment. All right, then we have our challenge question. How did the match spin without falling off the coin? Then you just click your answer and then submit. And that's the whole question. Okay, let's get started. Where did I go? I lost my video. Focus. Okay. Um. Oh, look, I can make myself bigger. Apparently, this is as big as I can make. Uh oh. Go back. Go back. Okay. There we go. This is as big as I can make it. So. We are going to go gather our supplies and then we are ready to start. Okay, I have gathered two nickels.
a matchstick. I went with the matchstick because it's square, not round, and I felt like that would be easier to balance on the nickels. Okay, and I got two cups. This cup and this cup. It did not say which cup like it didn't say the size of the cup mattered and I wanted to test that. So I got two cups. Okay. I'm going to be back just a little further so you can see more. Okay. I got the balloon and our instructions ahead. Okay, so we had to Yep, I have all the materials. Okay. Step one, balance the two nickels. Okay, I balanced the nickel and I use tails as my bottom base. Okay. Step two, place our matchstick. He lined it up with the nickel. So it's parallel to the nickel. This is very difficult because I have a fan going. No! Okay. I turned the fan off. Let's retry this. Balance the nickel. Hopefully I have enough. Nope. This is difficult. Apparently here the skill is balancing the match. Okay. A little top heavy on the red. There we go. So, our, I'm actually going to bring you closer and zoom in. Okay. There we go. All right. The Red part makes our center of mass, which says how we balance things. So if there's too much mass on this side, that means that our center of mass is towards this side. Okay, if we were to put it on the light side, our match with the heavy side would just flip over. And so that is why it's not even on the nickel. Okay, now our next step is the cup. No, is it the cup or the balloon? Cup. Okay, so I'm going to do the clear cup first. Okay, it is closed. Okay, Step four, blow up the balloon and tie it. It does not need to be a giant balloon. Okay, I'm gonna move you up just a little bit. So you can see the balloon. 
Okay. Rub it against our belly. I hear some clicking. Okay. Step six. Move the balloon around the cup. All right, let's try it. Oh, my match died. I'm gonna have to rebalance my match. Okay. Try it again. I'm going to hold the top of the cup with my finger. It works for a few seconds and then it falls off. I want to try what it does with the toothpick. I think my match stick is just a little too top heavy. So I got a toothpick. Which center of mass should be in the middle for the toothpick? Okay. That was a little too tilted, so. There we go, that's perfect. Okay. We're up against my belly again. Okay, let's try again. It's working! It still fell off though. Alright, I want to try bigger cup now. Balance it again. I want it to be completely level. So it's more likely to stay on. Come on. I hope you guys are having better luck with this than I am. I got it. Okay. Bigger cup. Rub against belly. All right. Try again. Oh, I made it about 180 degrees and then it fell off. Okay. And then I had one other idea. Is it going to have the same effect if I used glass instead of plastic? So, balance my toothpick again and apparently now my nickel. No! Come back. Try again. I will get this. You did it. Okay. So I got a glass. 
jar. And I want to see if it does the same thing. Okay. All right. Oh, we got movement. Oh, we had a little bit of movement there. It still seemed like once I bumped the jar that that's what tilted the toothpick to fall off, but it still worked with glass. I would say it wasn't as effective as the plastic, and I want you to tell me why do you think that was? Okay. Now we have finished our experiment. We need to clean up. Go to our challenge question. How did the match spin without falling off the coin? Now, remember it did eventually fall off the coin, but to the point of before it fell off the coin, why did it spin? Okay, was it static electricity from the balloon pulled on the match? The cup reduced the static force, which along with reduced friction from the coin, allowed the match to spin without falling off. Or static electricity from the balloon pushed the match away. The cup reduced the static force which along with reduced friction from the coin allowed the match to spin without falling off. And again, that's before falling off because I couldn't get it to stay on the coin. Let me know if you got yours to stay on the coin. Okay, and our third option is it's magic. Okay, once you have your answer, click submit. Then go to read all about it. Scroll down. The science of static electricity and friction makes the match stick rotate. See that? Static electricity, that's the same thing that when we rub the balloon against somebody, and we can take it next to somebody's hair and it can pull their hair. Can you see it? Yeah, there we go. That's static electricity. Okay. Get all that energy out of my hair. Okay. When you continuously balance a matchstick on the rim of a coin that has also been precariously balanced onto another coin, it might sound like rotating the matchstick will cause it all to come tumbling down. That might be the case if you were to use your hands. What if you were to use static electricity to rotate the matchstick? Would that even work? We'll show you how this isn't just possible, it's downright cool. These all come from Steve Spangler, which also has a series on Amazon Prime Video called DIY Sci, and they're really cool videos too. Okay, there's our video, our setup. He had his match stick the same way. However, it does look like our matches are composed a little differently. He has a white tip and I had a full red tip. I don't know if that mattered at all. Okay. You do not need to subscribe unless your parents want to. How does it work? You probably guessed this by now since you rubbed the balloon against your shirt, hair, or carpet, but this experiment revolves around static electricity. When you rub the balloon on a coarse surface, you give the balloon additional electrons. 
generating a negative static charge. Meanwhile, the match delicately balancing inside of the cup has a neutral charge. That means its charge is zero. When an object has a negative charge, it will repel the electrons of the other objects and attract that object's protons. Protons are positively charged. Pro protons, P, positive. You can also find a plus sign in that T to help you remember. Positive protons. See? Positive. Okay. It is negative electrons and neutral electrons are always negative. Neutral means that it has zero charge. The only way to really remember that is neutral technically always means zero or the middle point. And so keep your little positive P with that. Okay, let's continue. When the neutrally charged object is light enough, like the match in this case, the negatively charged object will attract the lightweight object, but try attracting a match while it's laying on a table. It doesn't work. So let's try that. Toothpick, balloon, static electricity, Nothing is happening. There is, if I touch it, if I touch it, it attached to the balloon once, and that was it. But it did mention without touching it. Okay. When, oh, we read that already. But try attracting a mash while lying on the table. It doesn't work. You need to reduce the amount of friction acting on the match for this experiment to work. And that's why you balance the match on the rim of a nickel. Balancing the match enables less surface area to be directly affected by friction, which enables the match to rotate more freely. Okay, so we have this whole flat section. If we have this whole flat section laying on something, every little individual molecule is interlinking with my fingers, and that is causing friction. Now, if I was to only have it on just a little bit, see how the surface area changes, and now it's only that little bit on my finger? So that's what it's talking about there. Okay. And then it gives us a science fair connection if you wanted to read over that. And related products. You do not need to buy any of these things. That's a Steve Spangler thing. Um, and that's it. So we have completed the spinning match. Please. Let me know your answers to the challenge question. And did you get your match to spin fully? Let me know. All right. See you next time.